Hello, family. I've got an interesting video for you today. I am uh, I'm actually gonna do your Q&A. Um, real quick, on my left hand, I've got the Revel Spring Drop, which I'll leave in the description box, and my right hand is naked. <laughs> so we're gonna fix that. Um, I do have a coat of the On Feel Off Base coat on, and I'm using um, a few colors from Panda Dips and a color by Revel. Since I'm doing a Q&A for this video, I'm not gonna be really talking about what I'm actually doing. Um, I will leave enough stuff as, you know, enough stuff, as much stuff <laughs> as possible in the description box, whatever I can, I, I can remember, I'll leave down there for you. Um, but I'm just doing a very basic mani. It was, this is kind of, um, kind of a hangout with me while I do my nails and answer some of your questions. I had a lot of questions you guys, you know, asked me. So this may have to be like a uh, two to three part series. <laughs> <laughs> which I am super stoked to do. I can't wait. Um, I was so happy you guys had so much stuff you wanted to know. And we're going to get into that right now. One of you guys asked me, um, how often do subscribers and followers reach out to me? And the answer to that is every day. Every single day I get emails and DMs. Um, and I love it so much. Literally, it's like the favorite part of my day when I get a DM or an email from one of you guys. Um, sometimes it's questions about products. Sometimes it's questions about technique. Um, I think my favorite emails and DMs that I get are photos of y'all's manis. I It makes my heart so happy. <laughs> Especially when you try something that I've recommended to you and it works and you're excited about it. That's like full circle moment makes everything that I do 100% worth doing. So those are my favorite messages that I get from you guys. Another really good question that I got from you guys is, um, how do I take nail fees? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw one of my last uploads. Um, it was a comment on one of my videos and it was somebody who said, quote unquote, something to this exposed she takes nail fees with her tortilla blanket <laughs> it was my daughter mia <laughs> who exposed me and she's 100 percent right <laughs> i have this blanket if i can find a picture of it i'll put it in here somewhere uh, my husband found this blanket for me on who knows where i don't know where he found it he ordered it from somewhere and it's the softest blanket ever and it looks like a giant tortilla and on one side and the other side is just the white furriness that you guys see in most of my nail fees. <laughs> I, mean, I took one nail fee with it and I'm like, dang, this is pretty awesome for nail fees. I kind of like it. So it's my new nail fee blanket. Um, I still use it as like a regular blanket, but it serves a good purpose. Help me take my nail fees. Sometimes I'll go outside in my backyard. I'll take nail fees and natural lighting occasionally. Um, but yeah, usually I'm just using my blanket. <laughs> if it works, it works, right? Um, another good question you guys had for me was do's and don'ts when combining different products. And this, and you know what? I, I haven't used all products. I have used a lot of them, a lot of different brands, a lot of different stuff. Um, so I can't speak to this like in its totalitarianism. <laughs> because I haven't used all products, but the products that I have used, I can tell you there really aren't many don'ts. I haven't found any products that don't work well together so far, um, which brings me to another question about cracking. Um, from the research that I've done and the experience that I've had, I have found that cracks can occur for two different reasons and in two different spots, predominantly. If you're getting cracks on your nails and they are horizontal towards your free edge, those are probably stress fractures, which means, you know, you bent your finger or your nail bed in a weird way and you cracked your nail or you have length to your nails and you don't have a high enough apex. Um, so if you have length to your nails and you're getting cracks like that, you may want to build up your nail a little bit first before you start adding color. And I'll throw a link in here to a video I have doing just that with some clear dip powder. 
And the other kinds of cracks, if they're like vertical cracks, that can be unevenness within your layers. For example, if you're applying a base coat and it's like a tad bit thicker on half your nail, like on the left half your nail, than it is on the right half your nail, um, that can cause vertical cracks. So again, to the best of my knowledge, and I'm not a, you, know, you guys know I'm not a professional, I'm not a nail tech, I'm not a nail anything, I just, uh, I like nail shenanigans, <laughs> and I like to share them with you. So those are the two reasons that I found and researched about why you may be getting cracks in your nails. Some of y'all wanted to know how often I do my nails. Well, <laughs> um, lately, every day. <laughs> um, for a few reasons. One, to keep myself sane, you know, being stuck in the house and not wanting to go anywhere or socialize has been difficult, I think, for all of us. And I had to really find my place that helps keep me sane and getting through every day. And for me, I mean, of course, hanging out with my kids, being with my family, hanging out with the cats is great. Eventually, we're all going to piss each other off. <laughs> So I retreat to my nail space and I, I do a mani and you know that's like my time where I can just do my thing, no one really bugs me and you know I just I kind of do what I do. So yeah, now it's like every day. Um, before this whole thing started, um, I would probably do my nails, I don't know, maybe once or twice a week and I would alternate hands. Um, or if I like went up breaking a nail and cutting them down like you can see on my left hand like I've been leaving my left hand alone um, I've had product on it for close to I don't know hasn't really been a week maybe a few days um, But I want them to grow out a little bit since I chopped them all off So I'm behaving myself with my left hand, which is why you're seeing me do my right hand um, almost all the time now <laughs> um, But you know what I didn't do my left my right hand for a while because I was doing wear tests um, and sometimes you just really need the practice, especially with your non-dominant hand. So what better way than to just focus on your non-dominant hand or dominant hand? Focus on working on your dominant hand. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so another question you guys had was, do I have any like favorite companies or favorite powders? And that is such a hard question because I like so many things from so many different lines. I'm a huge fan of Panda Dips. They're one of my favorite companies these days for a few reasons. One, their powders are amazing. I mean, I'm talking creamy, buttery. If y'all have not tried Panda Dips, try Panda Dips. She has sample sizes and quarter ounce sizes. And I feel like you get so much product for what you're paying for. And aside from that, I mean, quality is great. Price point is great. And I've personally spoken to the owner of the company and she's just the sweetest thing ever. So if you want to support small business and you're looking for a good investment, I would definitely check out Panda. I also, Peppy has got a place in my heart. You guys know that. I love Peppy gel. I, I'm obsessed with Peppy glitters. <laughs> I want all the glitters. They're glitters. I don't know what it is. I've had issues in the past where you put on a glitter and it's either too hard to work with or it's so fine that it's like... It just flies everywhere and it winds up all over the place and I have no patience. I'm like, once it's, I want it off. <laughs> it's fine on my nail, but I don't want it anywhere else. Peppy glitters, I find, are dense enough that they brush right off, but they're not chunky and difficult to work with. If you're like a beginner, Peppy gel is a great way to go for glitter nails. Um, speaking of which, best bang for your buck. You guys probably saw my um, review on the Color Club starter kit. That has my vote right now for best, most inexpensive starter kit. Color Club, um, it's called Serendipity. I got it at Walmart. I ordered it at walmart.com, so you can just order it online. You don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> and it was like under 20 bucks. I mean, you have to spend a certain amount on Walmart to like get free shipping or whatever, but if you're like me, there's always something I could use from Walmart, so not hard to do. Spend like 35 bucks to get free shipping, I'm in. Um, but yeah, it was like 20 bucks and I mean, it was great. I had zero issues. Um, I think that's probably my vote for best bang for your buck for a starter kit. If you are new, Color Club is where it's at. Since you guys know now that I do my nails like all the time, 
<laughs> um, you guys wanted to know if I use peel base under all my mayonnaise. Um, no. Recently, on my right hand, I am using peel base under pretty much every mani because I'm doing my nails every day. Um, I do not have peel base on my left hand right now. Um, typically, I'll only use peel base if I know I'm going to redo my nails within, you know, two or three days. Um, but I do soak off. Uh, you guys probably saw my soak off method. I'll leave it in the cards up here so you can check that out in case you have missed it. But that is my go-to soak off method if I'm not using peel base. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to chat a little bit real quick about gel polish. Um, one of your questions was, do I use products other than dip? Um, you guys have probably seen a few videos. I'll link one or two of them up here uh, with gel polish. And I love gel polish. I'm getting very, very much into gel polish these days. I recently discovered Nail, Nail Addict LA. Their gel polishes are amazing. I believe they're affiliated some way with Madame Glam. Um, the quality of product is just great for gel top coats. You guys know I love the Model 1s. I also love the Nail Addict LA top coats. I think they're both phenomenal. Um, I still use I May Leave sometimes. Um, not my favorite anymore, <laughs> but she's still good. And uh, for my swatches, I use Pretty Diva. I um, don't know why. <laughs> I think it's probably the least expensive gel top coat that I have. So I don't mind using that on all my swatches, which I've been very neglectful about lately. I have so many colors I have to swatch and I just don't want to. <laughs> Lazy these days. Um, one of you guys also asked me about the dip top coats. Since we're talking about gel top coats, let's talk about dip top coats um, and what to do about hard brushes and stuff like that. I found the best way to restore a hard brush is to not let it get hard to begin with. <laughs> and um, I'll link a video that I have up here, either the Rossi vid or one of my Peppy Gel vids, where it shows how I use my dip top coats. And I found the best way to apply dip top coats is super, super carefully. Apply your activator after you filed and buffed, so it's like your round two of activator. Let it dry for a couple of minutes. Wipe off with a dry paper towel. Then go in with your gel top coat. And once you apply the gel top coat to your first nail, wipe that brush off on both sides before you put it back in the bottle. That's gonna help cross contamination be prevented. And that's what's gonna cause your brush to get hard is that contamination between the base and the activator. Since the activator dries the base, it will dry on the brush and it will dry up in the bottle. So as long as you're wiping your brush off really, really well before putting it back in the bottle and not letting it come into contact with anything for an extended period of time, you should be totally fine with your brushes. So check out the video up there on um, Peppy Gel or I'll put one up on Rossi and you can see exactly how I use my dip top coat. I realize that I am telling you about <laughs> A lot of videos <laughs> um, and I can't possibly fit all of them in the cards so whatever videos I am referencing right now I will leave in the description box for you guys in case you want to check any of them out um, I'm gonna move on to another question um, kind of non nail technical stuff related but somebody wanted to know how many Facebook nail groups I'm in um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very active on Facebook. Um, once in a blue moon, you know, I'll, I'll scroll around on the feed. And if I see somebody with a question that I have a good answer to, and it hasn't already been answered, I may pop in and help somebody out. Um, and sometimes I'll throw a nail fee up there, like on the Revel Facebook page or on the Sparkle or the Peppy Facebook pages. Um, but I'm not very active. I think maybe I'm in a few non-brand specific groups. I'm in Nail Art Anonymous. Um, there's a dip powder buy sell trade page that I'm on, although I've never really done a buy sell trade. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm on that page. Um, yeah, those are really the Facebook groups that I belong to. I know that I mentioned um, in a video probably a while ago that my Facebook is my private Facebook. <laughs> I don't have like a Facebook account for Marla Chris, the nail person. My Facebook is Marla Chris, like 
the real life human, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I, I predominantly post on Instagram for all my nail stuff. I, I like have that separation of church and state, you know, like my Facebook is for my real life friends and family. And my Instagram page is all nails and followers like that. So I gotta like compartmentalize. Otherwise I commingle too much stuff. And I don't know what's going on. I get all confused. I'm a simpleton. <laughs> I really am. Yeah, so the Facebook groups, yes, I'm a part of a few of them, but I don't really interact much unless I am really bored <laughs> and hop on the Facebook feed and just see what's going on. One question that I'm so happy one of you guys asked was, is there a difference between dip and acrylic? Um, I'm going to give you my opinion from the research that I've done and from the products that I've used. So I can't speak again for the entire dip world because there might be something out there that I don't know about. So don't come for me. I don't know. <laughs> but from what I know, dip powder and acrylic is exactly the same. The only difference that I have found between the two really are the consistency. Um, dip powder is much more finely milled, making it, you know, something that you can apply without using monomer, which will dissolve larger crystals because you're using, you know, glue, resin instead of monomer. Um, can they be used interchangeably? Sometimes. Um, for example, one of my favorite clear dip powders is Mia Secret Clear Acrylic. It's not dip, it's acrylic but it applies just like dip powder, so I, I use it and I like it. Um, I've heard that there are some dip powders that you can also use monomer with as acrylic. Um, it doesn't work for all of them, doesn't work for every color. So I don't know if you can really interchange them, but they are essentially the same thing. I've heard some companies state they add vitamins and stuff into their dip powders, making them quote unquote healthy. Um, that might be true. But anything that you're putting on your skin or your nails, like with chemicals and stuff, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and call it healthy, but here's what I will tell you about my experience so far in this dip little world that I'm in. And I've been dipping now for close to a year and a half, I guess. I haven't, I haven't been doing this very long, um, but since I have been doing it, well, let's backtrack. Let's backtrack to the days when Marla got her nails done at a salon. <laughs> um, my nails were always super thin and brittle. And if I ever took my nails off, like acrylics off, and tried painting my nails just with regular lacquer nail polish, which is all I knew how to do. And by knew how to do, I meant um, not very well. I, I'm horrible at painting my own nails, which is why I was always a salon goer. And since I've been doing dip, I my nails have been so strong. And I don't know if it's because of added vitamins or if it's because I'm not filing my nails. I don't file my naked nails ever, ever. I will use my e-file or a buffer block to remove dead cuticle from right near my cuticle area, but I will not buff my whole nail. Um, I will not file my free edge, you know, with no product on. That can cause your nails to thin or fray or peel and I don't know. So far, it's working for me. <laughs> I can't speak to all of you guys and what may or may not work for you, but I find that not over filing or not filing at all for my naked nails has made my nails so much stronger and healthier, which also makes your product last longer and look better. So one of you guys wanted to know what my thought process is like for doing a mani and <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. Um, you know, once in a blue moon, especially if I get certain products, like if I if I ordered some transfer foils or um, decals or you know some sort of whatever, then I'll probably plan my mani out around you know whatever products I'm using. Um, but typically, if I'm just gonna sit down and do a mani, I really don't have a plan. I'll I'll pick colors uh, and just pray to the nail gods that it all works out. Um, I did not care for this Manny that I did. I, you know, the colors are gorgeous, but I, you know, I was getting very like New York Mets vibes. <laughs> um, and I'm not a fan typically. So <laughs> I'm a Yankees girl. Don't hate. 
Yes, I'm from New York originally, and I will always be a Yankees fan. So I felt like I was betraying my team with these colors. So you'll see in the end that I did pop off the orange nails and I re-dipped in just the blue. But yeah, I don't really have a thought process. I draw inspiration from what's around my nail desk and whatever mood I'm in that day. So when this many, I was in a very good mood. I was feeling happy. It reminded me of sunshine. <laughs> So that's what I went with. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have my shelf of dip powders right next to me. So I'll usually look up at that and get inspo. Um, or I'll get inspiration from you guys. You know, sometimes you'll send me mani pics or I'll see stuff on Instagram or on Facebook. And I'm like, ooh, I can twist that around. So yeah, I don't really have a thought process. I just sit down and kind of do what I do. As I am about to get into my gel top coat, one of you guys asked how to prevent peeling with your gel top coat. All right, so two things that you can do. One, um, gel top coat wants to grip onto something with texture to it. So roughing up your nails a little bit is gonna help that gel top coat stick really well. Um, sometimes, especially with darker colors, I find at least that roughing up the nail, you're gonna see lines of demarcation. And I don't wanna see that in like, you know, a, classic black mani or you know even any any darker color really so you can put a layer of gel base coat down first give that a cure and then go over it with your gel top coat and that should prevent peeling um, what you should be doing also is making sure you cap your edges really really well that will also prevent peeling um, I don't think I've ever had an experience where my gel polish peeled up on me, and I've done some wear tests. <laughs> I've had, you know, gel top coat on my nails for a couple of weeks, and I haven't had that experience. But if you are, definitely try roughing up your nail a little bit, maybe um, spraying your nails down with some alcohol before you apply your um, top coat, because that'll remove any oils that might be there that, you know, from touching your nails or whatever. So um, great trick there gel base coat and cap your edges so the last question um, for this video is probably my favorite question because it's something I love talking about <laughs> somebody asked me what my tattoo is on my left arm <laughs> I have a lot of tattoos um, most of them are big so I'm going to show you a couple of them right now um, the one on my left arm is a dragon and uh, She's actually a cover-up. <laughs> I had a tattoo on my wrist that I did not like, so I had it covered up. And now it's a dragon. Here she is. Her name is Carly. <laughs> and I've got a half sleeve on this arm. I've got three butterflies, which one for each of my kids, and the garden of life and all that fun stuff. And let me tell you, okay, so Candy Skincare has this stuff called Main Candy. It's a hair oil and a facial oil or a skin oil or whatever. And it works great on hair for keeping the frizzies out. But I find my favorite use for it is a tattoo oil. I find it just brings my tattoos back to life because I've had my tattoos for a good while now. And I just love the way this stuff looks on my ink. It's amazing. Now that one I got two years ago, my dragon. The one on my other arm, my half sleeve up on my shoulder, I had that one done close to four years ago. So, and it's on the outside of my arm, you know, so it tends to get a little bit faded. But I put this stuff on, literally just two or three pumps of this stuff, rub it into your tattoo, and it brings it right back to life. So, um, yeah, those are some of my tattoos. I think I have <laughs> eight in total. I've got a big one on my shoulder, I've got a little one on my shoulder, my other shoulder. I have one on my lower back. I have one on my ankle. <laughs> um, I think there are more that I don't remember I had. <laughs> but yeah, so um, those are my tattoos. And this was your Q&A. So I hope that I answered most of your questions. I have a few stragglers that I didn't get to. So um, keep the questions coming if you want. And I'm happy to do a Q&A 2.0. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in my next one. Love you, bye.